Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World Videos. In this chapter we are going to talk about the public revenue. For that we are going to start with a small definition, then we are going to talk about the difference between public revenue and public receipts. After that we are going to talk about the sources of public revenue, tax source, the characteristics of a tax, then we are going to talk about the non-tax sources. After that, we are going to focus on the objectives and of taxes, the classification of taxation, the principles of taxations, and then we are going to find out some concepts related with taxation. And by the end, we are going to present some model questions. So let's get started. Public revenue. This is one of the branches of public finance. It deals with the various sources from which the state might derive its income. These sources include incomes from taxes, commercial revenues in the form of prices of goods and services supplied by public enterprises, administrative revenues in the form of fees, fines, etc., and gifts and grants. The income of government through all sources is known as public revenue or public income. Professor Dalton defined public revenue in two senses, the narrow sense and uh, the broader sense. In the narrow sense, it includes income from taxes, prices of goods and services supplied by public sector undertakings, revenue from administrative activities such as fees, fines, etc. and Concerning the wider sense, it includes all the incomes of the governments during a given period of time, including public borrowing from individuals and banks and income from public enterprise. It is known as public receipts. Now let's find out the difference between public revenue and public receipts. Public revenue includes that income which is not subject to repayment by the government. Public receipts include all the income of the government, including public borrowing and issue of new currency. In this way, public revenue is a part of public receipts. So, public receipts equals public revenue plus public borrowing plus issue of new currency. What about the sources of public revenue? The sources of public revenue can be broadly classified into two tax source and non-tax sources. Taxes are imposed by the government on the people and it is compulsory on the part of the citizens to pay taxes without expecting a return. So, let's see some definitions. According to Professor Seligman, tax is compulsory contribution from a person to the government to defray the expenses incurred in the common interest of all without reference to special benefits conferred. Taylor defines tax as follows. Taxes are compulsory payments to the governments without expectation of direct return to or benefit to the taxpayer. According to Professor Charles Bastable, tax is compulsory contribution of the wealth of a person for the service of public power. And finally, according to Professor Tosig, the essence of the tax, as distinguished from other charges by the government, is the absence of a direct quid pro quo between the taxpayer and the public authority. The revenue from taxes came from three main sources, taxes on income, taxes on wealth and poverty, and taxes on commodities. What are the characteristics of a tax? First of all, it is compulsory payments to the government from the citizen. Each individual, irrespective of caste, color or creed, of age or sex, has to pay it. Refusal to pay it or delay it in payment brings punishment. 
Moreover, it is impo imposed on personal obligation. It means that it is duty of taxpayer to pay it and he should in no case think to evade it. 3. The absence of direct benefit between the state and people. The taxpayer do get many advantages from public authorities, but no taxpayer can claim direct benefit as a matter of right on the ground that he is paying of tax. Besides, it is payments for meeting the expenses in the common interest of all citizens. The governments have to provide public utility goods. For this, the governments have to incur huge amounts of expenditure. Therefore, taxes are imposed on all citizens so that all many share a common burden. Moreover, certain taxes are imposed on specific objectives, for example, tax on petrol to reduce consumption and tax on luxuries so as to divert resources for the production of essential commodities. Finally, there is no tax without representation. This means that proposals regarding taxes are to be sanctioned in respective assembly of elected representatives. Concerning the non-tax revenue, we have here commercial revenue, for example, income from public poverty and enterprises, the administrative revenue, gifts and grants, and others. Concerning the commercial revenue, they are income earned by public enterprises by selling their goods and services, for example, payments for postage, tolls, interest on borrowed funds, etc. They are also known as prices because they come in the form of prices and goods and services provided by governments. Concerning the administrative revenue, the receipts of incomes accrued on account of performing administrative functions by the government are called administrative revenue. Fee is a payment to defray the cost of each recurring service undertaken by the government in the public interest, according to Professor Seligman. Fees are payment imposed by the government, for example, court fee, license fee, passport fee, etc. Concerning the fines and penalties, fines penalties are imposed on persons as a punishment for infringement of laws. They are imposed to prevent crime. Fines and penalties are arbitrarily determined. And concerning the special assessments, according to Professor Seligman, a special assessment is a compulsory contribution levied by in proportion to the social benefit derived to defray the cost of specific improvement to poverty undertaken in the public interest. For example, when the government constructs a highway, the prices of plots on either side of it will naturally go up. Therefore, the landowners may be required to bear a part of expenses incurred by the government. Such charges are called as special assessments. Concerning gifts and grants, in general gifts and grants are the payments made by one government to another for some specific functions, for example, central grant to state government. Gifts are voluntary contribution made by the people to the government for some special purposes. The other sources of, re of revenue are forfeitures, escape, issuing of currency and borrowings. Let's take the example of the issuing of currency. The printing of paper money yields income to the government. It is mean to create extra resources by the printing of paper money. It is normally avoided because if once this method of financing is started, it becomes difficult to stop it. This further leads to inflation. Finally, concerning the borrowings, this is another source of public revenue that is through borrowings from the public in the shape of deposits, bonds, etc. It also includes external borrowings. Now let's discover the objectives of taxes. 
The objectives of taxes can be summarized as follows. Raising revenue, regulation of consumption and production, encouraging domestic industries, stimulating investment, reducing income inequalities, promoting economic growth, development of backward regions, and ensuring price stability. Now, let's move on to talk about the classification of taxation. Taxes are classified on different bases. Different bases adopted by the economist to classify taxes are the forms, nature, aims and methods of taxation. The various taxes may be classified under the following major heads. Direct taxes, including proportional progressive consumption, regressive and degressive taxes bases, indirect taxes, and other classifications such as income and poverty, production and capital goods, the uh, famous value-added tax, VAT, and so on. Let's talk about the direct taxes and indirect taxes. According to Dalton, a direct tax is really paid by a person on whom it is legally imposed, while an indirect tax is imposed on one person, but paid partially or wholly by another, owing to consequential change in the terms of some contract or bargaining between them. According to Prest, the distinction between direct and indirect taxes is more commonly drawn by reference to the basis of assessment rather than the point of assessment. From the above, we can reach in a conclusion that direct taxes are those which are paid by persons on whom these are imposed and the real burden is also borne by them. The burden of such taxes cannot be transferred or shifted to some other persons. That is, in the case of direct taxes, both impact and incidence fall upon the same person. Indirect taxes are imposed on one person but are paid either partly or wholly by another. The person who pays the tax in the first instance transfers its burden on the shoulders of another person. In other words, and in the case of indirect tax, the impact and incidence of the toll of the full tax on different persons. Example of direct taxes are income tax, wealth tax, corporation tax, gift tax, etc. And examples of indirect taxes are sales tax, excise tax, the value added tax, and so on. What about the principles of taxation? The criteria used for constructing a good tax structure are called principles of taxation. The principles of taxation relate to the distribution of taxation or allocation of tax burden to different categories of taxpayers. Principle of equity. This principle implies the fairness or justice in the distribution of burden of taxation. In other words, equity in taxation means all taxpayers should bear an equal sacrifice in the payment of taxes. There are two types of equity, horizontal equity and vertical equity. The horizontal equity implies the treatment of like people in a like manner. That is, persons who are equally well-off should be treated equally. To secure horizontal equity, persons with same income should pay equal amount of taxes. As for the vertical equity, this implies that unlike people should be treated in unlike manner. That is, the persons who are well-off should pay higher taxes than the worse of people. The theory is very difficult to practice though it looks to be pretty. Now let's discover some concepts related with taxation. 1. The tax neutrality. Tax should be imposed in such a manner that it should not influence the market decision of either satisfaction motivated consumers or profit motivated producers. 2. The tax rate structure. It describes the relationship between the tax collected during a given accounting period and the tax base. 
The tax base, the item or economic activity on which tax is imposed. For example, income, consumption, wealth, etc. The excess burden. Excess burden or dead weight loss refers to the reduction in economic efficiency below the level attainable with an optimal tax with no distorting effect. Buoyancy of tax. Buoyancy or administrative flexibility of tax refers to the total response of tax revenue to changes in tax base. Elasticity of taxation. Elasticity of taxation refers to the ratio of percentage change in tax yield to percentage change in coverage or rate of taxation. Finally, the Laffer curve or revenue rate curve. The revenue rate curve refers to the curve describing the relationship between tax revenues and tax rates. It is a graphical representation of the incentives created by tax rate. It explains the inverse relationship between tax revenue and tax rate. It has an inverted U shape. Eventually, let's present some model questions. 1. What are the major sources of revenue of the governments? 2. What are the qualities of a good tax system? 3. Explain the canons of taxation. 4. Distinguish between direct and indirect taxes. 5. What are the major taxes of central government in India? So, this is the end of this chapter. The next chapter will be related to public debt and budget. Thank you very much for your attention.